we want to speak this morning on the topic, the new life in Christ. The new life in Christ. And this is just a reminder. We have to stir up our pure minds with the word of God every day. You see, Christianity is not for Sunday morning. Christianity is a lifestyle. When I give my life to Jesus, I give it to him for keeps. For good. Not to take back. And when I give it to him, it is no longer mine. And I didn't even give it to him. You know, is he redeemed me? Is he who redeemed us? He is the one who bought us with his own precious and efficacious blood. That is the price that was paid for our salvation. Hello. So when we give our lives to Jesus, it's not to take back because somebody say and somebody do. And you know them petty, peevish, See how they can't even find good um, vaccine for whatever they want and everybody thinking is so people behaving. PV. Everything with ping ping. Let's go back to the word. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The word. The word. People, the word. If you come in and you're not applying the words to your life, you're wasting your time. The Bible says you are the most miserable person because you don't know where you belong. You're neither in out, up, down. You don't know. You have to be fully persuaded. You have to be convinced. Hello. So this morning as we hear God's word, please forget about the person sitting next to you and who did and who ain't do and who did they did and think about you. The new life. Watch that word. The new, not the old, but the new life in Christ. Father, we bow in your presence. God, we just rejoice. I feel so happy. God, I feel so good. And I thank you. Because there is joy in serving you. Thank you, Lord. We bow in your presence. And we thank you for the blessed Holy Spirit. God, you did not leave us without a helper. We thank you for him. Our comforter, our strengthener, our advisor, our friend our ally, everything. God, he is so much to us. He is everything to us. And we ask in Holy Spirit, you are the one who illumines our mind. You open our understanding. You give to us revelation. Yes, your word is spirit and they are life. Oh, God, let the truth of your word come home to our spirit. Oh, God, that it will bring about change. God, your word declared that if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, let there be newness in our lives today. 
in the name of Jesus. God, every besetting sin, every obstacle, oh God, everything that is hindering us and blocking us from entering in and getting to know you and the power of your resurrection. Oh God, only you can do the work. God, I bring down every evil imagination, everything now that will try to exalt itself against the knowledge of Christ. God, I bring them down in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Every mindset that is not of you, in Jesus' name. And God, every human spirit to the obedience of Christ. In the name of Jesus. Every spirit of confusion and warring in the minds of your people now. I cast them out. Let there be liberty and freedom. Let your word have free course. In the mighty name of Jesus. Every opposing spirit. In Jesus name. Bow to the Lordship of Jesus. He is Lord of the church. So have your way today Lord. And be thou glorified. Ah Lord God. Intervene. Deep in our spirit and in our emotion. Hey, God, do surgery this morning. God, those things that have your people under bondage, those besetting sin, those things deep down, only you can see it and know it. Let the surgery knife of your word that is quick and that is powerful and that is sharper than any two-edged sword. Do surgery! In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let there be transformation. Ah, Lord, let the light of the glorious gospel and your word shine forth. Breathe on us, Holy Spirit. Breathe on us, Holy Spirit. Breathe on us. Oh, breathe, Holy Spirit, breathe. Breathe, Holy Spirit, breathe. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Ephesians chapter 2. And those of you know, when I read in the word of God, me a fast reader, I am here to make you feel I could read the best or anything. I want us to understand the word of God. And remember the word of God is spirit and is life. Amen. The word of God is spirit and it is life. And it is the discerner of the thoughts and the intent of the... Is your family word? Let's go. Yes. So let's read. And you. Hello? And you. Had he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sin, wherein in time past, before you were quickened, you, in time past, you and we all, every single one of us, we all walk 
or live according to the course of this world. Not another world, you know. This very world that we are in. According to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Among whom also we all had our conversation or our lifestyle. Hello? In times past, in the lust of the, fulfilling the desire of the, and of the, and were by the nature, the children of wrath, even as others. So none of us could justify ourselves. All guilty. We all once were. Let's go. Among but God. That changed the whole thing. You hear all the things that we once were. We once were. Past tense. Get it sinking. I did not say it. So don't get vexed with me. And if you get vexed with the word, the word know how to mash you up. Yeah? But God, who is rich, thank God for mercy, you know. Mercy say no, don't kill them, don't destroy them. Mercy, mercy. God who is rich in mercy, not man. Now your mommy, and your daddy, and your good friend. You know, plenty of we are good friends in high places. When anything happens to me, me have a body and me have people in high places. They can't fix this. See, who is rich in mercy for his great Behold what manner of love hath the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the children of You see, some, you see what we just do to God? And as soon as somebody barely touch we, we ready for shoot them and knock them out and keep them malice for life and this, that for life. And if it is here, we... But look at here. For his great love, wherewith he loved us. That is our creator. Let's hear what he says. God with his great love, wherewith he have loved us, even when we were dead in sin. I pray for the spirit of wisdom and understanding and revelation in the word of God, even when we were dead in sin. He said what? Had quickened us together with Christ by grace are uh, he saved. And had raised us up together. What an awesome God. What a love. Hello. He didn't put us just to sit in faith temple, you know. He put us far above planet earth. Right where he is. Made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. 
Glory! Michael is the who come out from bottom song. Hello! Missy said, no, in heavenly place, give me a break. You can't touch that. You cannot touch that. And we know where we all come from. And let me tell you something, eh? As much as we would try to ma bottom tongue and ma pause lot and this and that, those people have higher standards than a lot of we who have on color and tie and carry on. I could tell you that they take care of the own you see wrong there. You hear me? So sometimes when you hear we criticizing and pulling down, and we see those in the heart of man is what God dealing with eh? Now the clothes and the paint and the house and the bolsters and them know the heart of man and had raised us up together and made us sit together. Not by ourselves, you know, together now, togetherness in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Let's go with the word again. That in the ages to come. Hallelujah! That in ages to come, he might show. Get it, you know, I'm taking time. If this is all you get this morning, I want to get it in your spirit. That in the ages to come, he might show what God's showing off. The ex, you know, tell all the God, you know, pow, pow, God, you know. When God do anything, it's bigger. Hallelujah, no man can touch it. He wants to show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards who? I don't mind if some people say some people say God like if he belongs to you. God is personal to him. It is my walk with God. So if you think I boasting and you feel you more than this, and you know how some people just try to find everything. Hear me? That's my privilege. I love him. I appreciate what he has done for me. And I promise him to live for him. Because one of these days he's going to show off. Say, look at the work that I have done. That's my daughter. Hello. Too many of us want the approval of men. I don't want none. Let me get his approval. He's going to show the exceeding riches. Now it's a million and trillion. We have a trillion dollar. Everything blowing all that away. When you see his riches of his grace, nothing can touch it. No storm, no hurricane, no, 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 no. Where you want call it, who can touch it? And whatever God bless, in that time it will be for eternity. All everything done here is for time. Time, temporal, born up, exceeding. And this is what his kindness towards us. And it's not through our own self, but in Christ. So we see that. He had quickened us. That means he made us alive. Why? Because we were dead. We were dead how? In sin. In trespasses and sin. All have sin. Let's go now to Colossians chapter 3. And then I'll come. Even if you just get the word, that's what I want. Get it. In your spirit. So you could flesh it out. In the workplace. At home. When you're playing. Whatever, whatever. When somebody mash you. And somebody do your well. Work it out. Hear what he say now. Hear, hear what Ephesians say. Ephesians say. 
you had to quicken who were dead in trespasses and in sin. Watch how God would line up, eh? And since you were dead in trespasses and sin, hey, what is sin? And you, quickening coming again, you know, life. He come that we might have life and life more abundantly. You had he quickened who were dead in what again? Trespasses and sin. I did not see that. Let's go. Verse 2. I didn't just go and write that, eh? I did not write Ephesians 2, and I did not write Colossians 3. Hear it. If, if, just per chance, I can't know for you, you have to know for yourself. It's personal. It's an individual thing. It's a decision that you have to make. Nobody can make it for you. If he then. Remember you were dead, eh? In trespasses and sin. But he said, if he then be risen with Christ. That means if you were made alive in Christ. Because he said, if any man be in Christ. He is a new creature. All things. That all life in Ephesians chapter 2. That we once walk according to the course of this world. According to the spirit of disobedience. That's how we once walk. But he said, if you've been made alive in Christ, if you've been born again, if you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you recognize that you are a sinner and you need a Savior and you repented, he says, if you then be risen with Christ, We're not walking anymore according to the prince of the power of the air. The spirit that now walketh in the children. We are no more disobedient children. We are now obedient children. Get it brethren, get it. Before we gave our lives to Christ, we were out there. We were lost. We were under the control of the enemy. And when we gave our lives to Jesus, it's a complete new life. He says, no, we have to seek. We have to go after those things which are above. I want us to get us in a... He is saying we have to go for those things which are above. Heavenly now. We translate it from earthly. Here on planet earth, we are strangers. And we are pilgrims. And we are foreigners. And some of us, we ain't want to let go the world. God understand. God understand one thing. That is why he tell you how we are to live. We leave one camp. And we come over to the next. And some people want the and boat. You can't the and boat. You can't serve two masters. You can't serve God on a Sunday and level and the whole week. Some of you only get God one day. Not even a day. And we ain't stay too long in church either. 
If you only go say 12, 30, them that keep short, them are go long, them are this. And when you go all where you're going, they buy the workplace eight hours. But because of money, and who given you the strength and the health? Hello. The earth is the Lord, the fullness thereof, the world and they that do it. And a man own, man never make nothing, man can't create nothing. If, if, if they create them, they have to get their own material. Say, so because everything come from you, but once you're taking God's dust and God's word, and you come and say, me, you, you did not create it. Where you get the dirt from? Who make it? You ain't make it. And we both say, I created this, you did not create it. And you could argue over that. Whenever you could get your own material, make it from nothing. Say, let there be. And it come while you make it. Otherwise, leave God thing. Too many we taking God glory for says we do. And if you see how some of we run, it's true, you know, the science. It's, 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 and, and God just give them a little click in the brain. <laughs> Man, mere man, mere man, stop worshipping man, stop fearing man, fear God. And you always hear me say, if old AJ gets you, no, old AJ ain't born for come, let get you. You think you're for old to let? You have an old student. Everybody dies. Some don't even get a chance to come into the world. So come on. Thank God you get the privilege and the honor to come into the world. And that is for you to serve him. He made us to worship him. So let's get it right. Get it right. He wants us to be where he is. He wants to make a public show. See what I've done. This is my bride. Wow. Hallelujah. And I tell you when some people was getting married. Oh, yeah, yo. They go for all your coat, especially this. Uh, when we get married, they didn't have all them things uh, going on. Thank God they didn't have it. Because I will not get the money to do it. Hello. When you get married, it's wash your foot and go. No. <laughs> Hello. You hear me? So God, he wants to show off. God wants to show off on you. God wants you to make him proud. Say, wow. 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 That's my daughter. That's my son. These are my children. They are my bride. Come on. Yes, he wants to show off the exceeding greatness of his power. Hallelujah. And he wants us where Christ sits at his right hand and the right hand of God. What position? Let's see what the next verse says. Set. You see? You see where our eyes are supposed to be? Brethren, when we set our affection, our passion, our love, on things above and not on things on the earth. The things on the earth, they will all pass away. And they're just, watch me, watch me. <laughs> watch the fall, yeah? Some of we have plenty of things and all, you know. But we can't enjoy it, you know. Because we have it like a showcase. You know, when they had the, up, when they had the window, really thing and them. No, no, no. When they had, 
All your chairs set and all your, your show window. You can't go in this chair and sit down and take it up. Don't touch it. And watch now. Somebody who don't love your gods. When you're dead, then lie. Don't them sleep. Bug getting it and all. If bug they are wrong still. You walk so hard and you get it and you are not afraid to enjoy it. Hello? Come on, wake up. Wake up. You have it and you're not enjoying it. Every minute you're dusting and you're wiping and you're And when the grandchildren and then come, man, they dive in up. <laughs> Thank God for those grands. They know how to, they know how to shake the whole thing up. Hello, you know when the grand come. Let me give you the secret. When the grand come, you had his strength. For wife and sweep. Now bring them back here. And if you bring them here, don't leave them. They just they mashing up and messing up everything. Say set your affection on things above and not on things of the earth. Let's go on and hear why. For ye are dead. And your life. Watch me. Hello, brethren. Look, look at that. For ye are dead. You are dead. A dead man can't react, you know. It is always tell people, a dead man cannot react. Anytime a dead man reacts, everybody go run. If you have a dead man here, and as much as you're praying, some people speed, you know. <laughs> because if they see the dead man and hear some people, I feel like a spirit. They are jumping. They, they go on in a day. They see a thing. All they say, they feel much less. For see the dead man coming up and say, Hi, Kelly. Hi, Sister Denny. Reverend Denny, how are you doing? Who for you? You understand me? But he is saying, Hey, we are dead. And what we are dead to? We are dead to sin. Sin should not be controlling our lives. Brethren, there is a difference between committing a sin and living in sin. I might commit a sin. I'm not even aware it is wrong. Or just off. King, but... When you're living in it, you're living in fornication. You're lying. You you're lie, lie, lie. Everything comes out your mouth. You lie. You're thief, thief, thief. In a, a thief. Some people just thief. <laughs> it is not yours. Lying, thiefing. So much bitterness. Hatred, and you hear me this always tell you plenty. You still have dead people that you yeah, release yet. Let go the dead people and them. Let them go all who do you when they do you when they've been small, when they've been little, when they've been. Li Let them go. Let go your mother and your father and your brother and your. And a lot of it is in a lot of families. Deep, deep seated things. Let them go. Let them go. They're not hurting the person who dead. It's you who they hate because it means your food good. You yeah, have also. Because you say that you let people and them. Let them, let people and them, let them go out. Run them out. Release them. Forgive them. And move on. Christ has redeemed your life. Let them go. And yeah, if you don't forgive them, you could pray till you're way regarding going to forgive you. 
a lot of we praying and bawling and, and that, that. You think that impressed God? God dealing with the heart. The heart. God sees the heart. If I regard iniquity in my heart, God said, you ain't hearing me. You can't open God if I hear you. You got a tiny face from you. Hypocrite, and you still have your grandmother, still have, still have your mother, and your father, and your sister, and your cousin. Some of you, your husband. Some of you, your wife. You have to let them go. Your soul is eternal. And sometimes them people making it into heaven, and you ain't making it. Can you make it right? And we saying here, let go. You are dead and your life now is hid with Christ in God. I just tell people, anybody wants to do me anything and wants to touch me, here we have to do now. You have to go through Christ. No, you have to go through God first. And then you have to go through Christ to find me. And watch now, two of them, you can't touch me. You can't touch me. How you can touch me? You ain't greater than God, and you ain't greater than Christ. And even before you meet them, you might have to meet some angels too. Plenty blows for you. You can't penetrate that. You're too weak. And the thing about it, you can't penetrate it because you know why? You are evil in your heart. So hear me, brethren. God wants our lives to be hidden in him. What security is that? That God have you. You who think you are a nobody. You who don't value yourself and value who you are in Christ. You are the apple of God's eyes. You are precious. You are honorable. You are blessed. God said I will give men for you and people for your life. When we walk uprightly, brethren, God wants us to walk uprightly. Walk in the fear of God, not man. And some people have us, Pastor and Sister Lenny, them not see, them not hear me, the Holy Ghost. And if you can't talk, if Holy Ghost talking to you, you can't obey Holy Ghost. Who am I? You why you tell me where Pammy come from bottom song and where me used to eat so stuff and where me used to sleep by it. Me, you know, I can't see, but God sees. God knows every one of us. God knows where we are at in our lives. And he is saying to us, if he then be risen with Christ, I want you to seek those things Let's, let's shift. Let's shift our lives now from the material. No, that ain't mean God ain't wants us to be blessed, you know. But don't make those things your God. We have them like idols. Brethren, things come and things go. I was you not, know, let me tell you something. China making some things now. All you have to do is just rest them down in the house, you know. And let a year to pass. Go touch it. Even plastic, it's, it's touch the... Miss, excuse me. Just so. Don't to the plastic bag of them. You have things in plastic bags. I say, you know what they say in China? They say, stop, put up. <laughs> Use them and go. Move on. No storing up. Time you touch them. They mess up the whole place. You can't get the bag off your hand and all. I say. So that is to make you get fed up. Boy, see me and them back me and some of them because they mean that's showing us that everything that can be shaken, everything that can be destroyed will be destroyed. Set your affection on the things above, on the things of God, on the things that will last for eternity. That is our value. There are some people at the workplace, 
they like ravenous wolves. Everybody fighting and cutting along one another for position. Hello. Even in the church. We going up your man and we going church. It can't walk. Light and darkness can't walk. You could bathe between the fresh and the salt and the water and the that. You could do all the way you want. Can't walk. Can't walk. So stop it. Stop it. If God be God, serve him. And let God do the work that only he alone can do. Stop messing up other people's life. Stop going and lying and doing all kind of things just to get position. It is not of God. It is demonic. Stop it. Set your affection on things above and not things on the earth. Why? He said, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. You notice the two verses, the two books, the two chapters I just read there. They're repeating the same thing, you know. And that is what I want you to know. And when God says something one time and two times, hear me, it is a strong warning. Brethren, this world is not our home. We are not here for good. You go dead. Some people don't want to hear it. Some people even want to call the name cancer. Don't call the name. Do this. Don't declare it. Hello. Wake up. So cancer bigger than you? And bigger than God? But you're dead anyhow. Even if you get healed from it, you still have a dead. For it is appointed unto man once to die. So if you think you're dead and you come back up, you're dead, you're still dead. So therefore, set your affection, your love, your passion on things above. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. That's the important thing in life. Brethren, look around you. Look around. See what is happening. And ask yourself your question. Where am I in my Christian life? Am I living the new life in Christ? Hello. Or am I still dead in my trespasses and in my sin? There are Christians who filthy communication coming out the mouth and saying it slip. How that slip? It is from the abundance of the heart the mouth speak. Hello. Bad word, no slip. No. Everything in your heart, it can't come out. Yes, we're taking the name of Jesus in vain. And it, sometimes it irritates me. I mean, oh Lord, oh Jesus, come on. That's a precious name. All authority, all power, all dominions, all might. God has exalted that name above every other name. Every name that is name. Everything that have a name. Every human. Even everything that had me. Our body. Got to bow to the Lordship of Christ. So that's a precious name. And some of us, we have it like a swear word. And as a, we just use it anyhow. No. 
No, people, no. We must reverence that name. So when we use that name, the authority that is invested in that name, we will invoke it and it will come to pass. We shall call upon that name. Hallelujah. But when you take it and make it a byword and any other, oh Lord Jesus, oh Lord Miss Kane hath that Jesus, and we gone out and we gone with Jesus Christ, all of Stop it! Reverence that name. Hallow that name. Yes. And hear me now, it has authority both in this life. And in the life to come. In heaven and in earth. And watch me now. Even under the earth. When the devil hear that name. Demons tremble. They say don't call that name. And they have to give it. Jesus. Church. We have to come to that place. Where we recognize we were once dead in trespasses and sin, but now we are new creatures in Christ. All that we are is in Christ. It is in him we live. It is in him we move. It is in him we have our being. Whatever we are, it is because of him. I want to encourage us the hour is late. The times we are living in, God wants us to shine. He wants to show forth the exceeding greatness of his power in our lives. And that would only be effective by the way we live, by walking in obedience to the word of God. And in the same Ephesians, and when we're going down here, he said, therefore, we must mortify. Yes. He wants to show his exceeding greatness, but there is something we must do as Christians. We have to reckon, he said, mortify. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth, this physical thing here, mortify them. Reckon them, come on again, dead. And hear what it means, dead to sin. We're supposed to be dead to sin. Sin shouldn't be controlling us. The Holy Spirit is the one who should be controlling us. And the word of God that is dwelling richly in us. So that it will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. And we will be able to say like someone, we are the blessed man. The blessed man walketh not. The blessed man does not continue to walk in the counsel of the ungodly. No, we ought not to. And we're not supposed to be standing in the way of sinners. We rush in to go into the same mess and mock. And say, what happens to that, this culture? Huh? That's what you call it, culture? The word of God call it sin. Sin. Once the name of the Lord cannot be glorified, you could praise God and worship God in it. Hello? You could get up and clap your hand and say, praise the Lord. You could shout Jesus. Hello? No, but we find ourselves, we were fitting. Everything we fitting in. We were fitting. What manner of person we are to be. We're supposed to be walking circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, buying back the time. 
Because why? The days are evil. We are in evil days. And some of you want to walk naked just the same like them. It is a shame to see some Christian in tongue. Vex with sister then you why they like it or not. And I'm not going to rebuke you. You know what you ought to do. Some people set up their cell. Let it come. Let it come. Watch it. Watch that spirit. You are destroying your own self. You know how you are to walk. Whether you're young or whether you're old. We must walk with respect. We must respect ourselves. This body is still the temple of the Holy Ghost. We are to glorify him in it and watch our conduct. Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil cons. All right, all you don't say it for me. <laughs> Inordinate affection and covetousness, which is idolatry. Brethren, listen to me. And this is a song warning. God is warning of us as a people. We are the light of the world. We are the salt of the earth. We are a peculiar people. And you know what peculiar I means? We're different. Why are the war fights up to get in between to say what? You belong? But you belong to the greatest kingdom. The most powerful kingdom. Hallelujah. And you fitting in for mock. Eh? Hello. Hello. What God gave us our beauty and our body for? To sell cheap? To his? I like how you're local. Come on. That means you don't know who you are. That means you don't have no value or self-worth. When you know who you are, you don't look for man's approval. You look for God's approval. My desire is to honor God. Honor God with your life. Honor him. Mortify. Reckon. The temptation will be there. But we are a peculiar people. We are a royal priesthood. Amen. Hello. We are a holy. You know, we are peculiar. And watch God. We are royal. I am royal. Because the king of kings, and not just a king, you know. He is the king of kings. And he is the lord of lords. Royalty. Royal blood flow through my vein. Hello. Royal. And then we are a holy nation. Holiness means to be separated. We ought to be separated. And this separation is not that I'm better than you, you know. But from my lifestyle, you will know that there is a difference. We are different. I won't despise you and say, oh, I don't have anything to, but I'm not going to walk in your council. I ain't going to stand in your, your way. Eh? And I ain't going to sit in your seat in this scornful. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to compromise it. I know who I am. And we must represent our God with pride. And I ain't talking about, you know, Pray that make you feel better than no, but God must be pleased with my life. Brethren, the hour is late. Come on, let us lay aside, lay aside the weight and every sin that is besetting us. I find so much people have man problem and woman problem. 
You see you going down the road and you hear people talking. Me, I don't tell him. Me, I don't tell she. Pure man and woman. Five, ten, eight, twenty men. One woman. Twenty women. One man. And so we going. Jumping, 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 jumping. Like kangaroo. Jumping, jumping. Stop it. Stop it. Even in the church. Stop it. What a word to the wise is sufficient. And people do not like to hear it. But I tell all I would always say it. Because let God be true. And every man a liar. And you cannot say that nobody did not warn you. You ain't know about the church. Lie. Depart from evil and do good. Come out, mortify. Put to death the old man daily. Daily put to death. And we ought to be obedient people to the word of God. Obedient. And if you're not obedient, you're wasting your time. Because God requires obedience from us all. I'm saying to us, brethren, we have the scripture before us. And I have no sin. But you see, I come in to realize that is only the word of God could do it, you know. You read it there. You can say, I write down nothing and bring it. If you look at it there. Mortify them for your members which are upon the earth in the shop in heaven. Even though we are seated with Christ up there, we still live in our planet earth. Mash it up. Kill it. Kill the old man. And do what is right. Let's see verse 6. For which things sake? Hear the warning. He who have been often reproof. God is a God of mercy. Eh? God is a God of love. But listen to me people. A word to the wise is sufficient. God requires holiness without which no man can please see God. Brethren, for which things sake, for which things sake, all those that has gone before, where he said, we are dead too. You see, we are dead. When we gave our lives to Christ, he make us alive. We are alive to righteousness and true holiness. But we are dead to sin. He said, when we get the warning for which things sake, the wrath of God cometh under. So a word to the wise is sufficient. Brethren, God loves us. God hates sin. God forgives sin. But shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God say no. Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost is what God is required. God wants us to live holy lives. We're going to stand. We're going to bow our heads. And you are here this morning. You never surrender to Jesus. But you're saying, Sister Denny, I want to be in the army of the Lord. I don't want to continue to live in sin. I want to live a holy life. I want to be a child of God. I want to be a child of 
obedience. If you are here this morning, I want you to raise your hand. Is there such a person? You need Jesus. That's the first thing. You need Jesus. You need him to transform your life. For any man being Christ, he is a new creature. He wants to make you new. Brand new. Brand new. Any man, boy, girl, be in Christ. He is a brand, brand new. He ain't patching you up and putting in peace and scrape off peace and put in a patch. No. Brand new creature. If you're here today, raise your hands and say, I need Jesus. The opportunity is yours. The privilege is yours. You are without excuse. Is there such a person? Okay, so nobody is here who needs Jesus. Everybody is part of the kingdom of God. We can't force you. It's a choice. But you are here this morning, and the Lord has spoken to you. We are going to bow our heads, and I want you to talk to God. You see, we don't know your heart. We don't know the struggle. We don't know what you're going through. But the beautiful thing about God, he searches the heart. He tries the rain. He knows the intent. You want to make that commitment to him. Ask him to forgive you. Ask him to cleanse you. Ask him to deliver you. Ask him to break that whatever that stronghold is in your life. That thing, that besetting sin. That sin that has you under control. That thing that you constantly, God, yes, I can do it and then you're going back. And God, yes, and you find an excuse to justify it. God is saying, let go of it. Let go of it. Hallelujah. Forgetting those things which are behind. And asking God to come in and to do that work in your life. And you desire in your heart, God, I want to honor you with my life. From today, I am surrendering my all to you. By your grace, God sees the heart and God wish that none should perish. None that but all of us should come to repentance and to eternal life. That's what he wants us to have. Eternal life. Eternal life. Brethren, the hour is late. Jesus could put in his appearance at any time. Are we ready? Hallelujah.